And then pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Again, I just wanted to mention this while we're discussing di different types of tissue, but we'll go more into detail with this when we start talking about the respiratory tract. So again, it appears stratified, but it's actually simple, just one layer of cells, and they're just all regularly shaped in their columns, so they'll be columnar. They're really um, active in secretion and movement of the material that they're secreting with the cilia on the outside. Not all columnar epithelium is ciliated, but when we're talking about the respiratory tract, it is ciliated, and that's to help move the mucus throughout the respiratory tract to propel different things that you might be breathing in away from the cells. Okay, moving on with connective tissue, we can uh, talk about some characteristics of that. Most, it's the most abundant uh, type of tissue in the body. It's found in every organ. And the cells are going to be separated by an extracellular matrix. You can think of the matrix as a liquidy part of a chunky soup. The chunks are the protein fibers and the cells that maintain the matrix. Um, cells of the connective tissue will vary based on their different types of tissue. There are four different types of classes. You can find the connective tissue proper, such as fat, like adipose, and several types of fibrous tissue. There's cartilage, bone, and blood. And so we'll find chondroblasts in cartilage, and osteoblasts in bone, stem cells in blood, and fibroblasts in the connective tissue proper. And so we can get deeper into those when we get to those particular systems, but just as a a general categorization, we have four different types of connective tissue. And they all have different functions. So connective tissues perform um, a lot of different functions, but most importantly, they support and connect other tissues. From the connective tissue sheath that surrounds muscle cells, to the tendons that attach bo uh, bones to muscles, and to the skeleton that supports the positions of our body. Protection is another major function of the connective tissue in the form of fibrous capsules and bones that protect de delicate organs and um, your skeletal system. Specialized cells in connective tissue uh, defend the body from microorganism, microorganisms that enter the body. Transport of fluid, nutrients, waste, chemical messengers. Um, this is ensured by specialized fluid connective tissues like blood and lymph. And then adipose cells will store surpl surpluses of energy in the form of fat. So when we have too much glucose and we take in too much food, it'll um, either turn into glycogen or stores of fat and get stored in these adipose cells. And, and that'll help contribute to thermal insulation of our body. So connective tissue has a lot of different functions and we'll get to each one of these as we start getting a little bit further into the semester, especially when it comes to bone and blood. And so a little, I put a little chart together for you just for your own um, uh, study purposes, but this is pretty similar to the one you see in your book. You can kind of see that connective tissue types are distinguished based on types and arrangement of protein fibers. So um, like collagen fibers or elastic fibers or reticular fibers. And then they're also categorized based on their ground substance and non-fibrous protein fibers, and then they're whether they're fluid or not. And so whenever we talk about connective tissue, we'll discuss the type of matrix in each type. And matrix is the fluid between the fibers and the cells in connective tissue. And so it defines what each type of connective tissue is going to be and what makes it unique. So first we'll start with loose connective tissue. Areola tissue is made of a lacy network of protein fibers. It fills the spaces between muscle fibers, surrounds blood and lymph vessels, and it supports organs in the abdominal cavity. This type of tissue underlies most epithelia and represents the connective tissue component of epithelial membranes, which are described further in a different section later in the semester again. So just think of it as kind of usually like an attachment site for such as like skin to the underlying muscle um, underneath. Adipose tissue or fat is going to be mostly for protection like cushioning and then energy storage. It also provides thermal regulation because it's an insulated um, or it's an insulatory type tissue. Uh, each of us has a set number of adipose cells that we develop in childhood and when we gain or lose weight we don't shed them we only increase or decrease their size because you can see there are nuclei 
and then that amount of fat in that cell either gets larger or smaller. So the number does not change, the size does. This is why it's important in early childhood to not develop too many fat cells because these are going to remain throughout our entire lives. It kind of looks like chicken wire. You can kind of see the nuclei are always pushed off to the sides. But um, yeah, adipose tissue or fat tissue is typically going to be associated with energy storage. Then we have dense connective tissue. There are two types of dense connective tissue. One on the top has collagen fibers running in one direction. So you can kind of see it's very ordered. It's regular, if you could say that. Um, this is dense, regular elastic tissue. It contains elastic fibers in addition to uh, collagen fibers. It allows ligaments to return to their original length after stretching. So this is what helps your body uh, joints move back and forth, or at least return them back from like an extension. One on the bottom has collagen fibers in all different directions. And we can kind of look at this as being irregularly shaped, very random, disordered. And this irregular dense connective tissue is going to help form the deeper layers of our skin. And the irregular and random arrangement gives this tissue really strong, great strength um, in all different directions, but less strength in one particular direction, which is why the regular dense connective tissue is good at returning a ligament back to its resting um, phase, whereas this is just general strength. So we'll find the regular dents in ligaments and tendons, and then irregular dents in lower layers of the skin. And fibroblasts are the what is secreting uh, the collagen fibers. Okay, and so now we can talk about cartilage a little bit. We don't need to know too much about these right now as we'll get to them more when we talk about the skeletal system. But just know that the rigid matrix is gonna be containing collagen fibers, ground substance, and fluid. The matrix contains chondrocytes within lacunae, or lacunae, however you want to pronounce that. Cartilage is avascular. There are no blood vessels or nerves, which is why when someone tears cartilage or injures it in some manner, it slowly heals. It does not take, or it takes a very long time for cartilage to heal because of the lack of blood flow to it. It relies on nutrients being exchanged from other tissues that have blood flow. There are three different types of cartilage, hyaline, fibrocartilage, and elastic. And we'll talk about those a little bit more later in the semester. But these are what they kind of look like. You can see hyaline looks like frosted glass. It kind of covers your joints, connects your ribs to your sternum, surrounds your trachea, supports the external nose. It's very flexible. It kind of looks like fish-eyed soup. So you can kind of remember that for your own uh, fun. Uh, fibrocartilage is strong, compressible, um, and that's due to the thick collagen fibers. You can see they're really thick. And this is you know, be found in the menisci of your knee and in intervertebral discs. And then you have elastic cartilage. It's very similar to hyaline cartilage, but it has a little bit more stretchy elastic fibers for it so that it can bend easier. We'll find this in your outer ear in the epiglottis, which is like the flap that covers your airway when you swallow. If you tug on your ear, Notice that the lobes immediately return back to their original uh, shape, and this is due to the amount of elastic cartilage on the outside of your ear. Then we can talk about bone a little bit. This is going to be containing living, living cells, so it's not dead. It has calcium salts and collagen fibers. It's super rigid. It's really hard connective tissue, the most rigid and hard connective tissue. It has a really strong blood supply, which is why it uh, heals quickly compared to cartilage. There are two types, compact and cancellous bone, or spongy. Spongy is also called cancellous or trabecular. You might see all those be interchangeable. It's found in long bones only, and it's surrounded by compact bones, so it's the inside of the bone, kind of, or more so. And the compact bone is, bone is what's going to surround it. It's also called, called cortical bone, and these are more heavy and tough compared to nature. Um... And again, you don't really need to know too much about bones right now as we'll get to that a little bit more when we get to the skeletal system.